So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give basically a breakdown and a bit of an approach on you know this style of trading, right? So the people that are new here, obviously the the style of trading that we're doing, we are you know trading towards liquidity, external legs and whatnot. Um, I need to turn the face cam off. It's freaking me out. Um, so yeah, we're trading liquidity, we're trading external structure. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're building a narrative, building a picture and, you know, trying to understand what the real kind of story, I call it a story because, you know, you want to build a story or an image of what price kind of needs to do. Because when you start approaching the market in that way, you're going to find yourself being a lot more patient because you understand what price needs to do. So understanding what price needs to do, you're then going to start, you know, taking the correct entries, understanding at what points price is ready to move. So your win rate is going to be a lot higher and your risk to reward because finding the narrative, finding and building the picture is off of the higher time frame. So essentially, I'm going to walk through this sell position, um, which was, I believe, yesterday. Um, what we can do is obviously I thought we were going to be seeing the external highs get broken and obviously price isn't ready to do that whether it means price is going to come further down or whether or, you know I'm just incorrect this time and it is just going to come lower but essentially the whole kind of narrative behind this position was what I was assuming is obviously this this is all our external structure right so then all of this is our internal and then this is the external so i'm assuming price was going to come up and create the new high so that being the narrative we understand that then if we look at current structure we can then look at that this is external this is internal this is external this is internal external internal external and then we're gonna see another type of retracement right we're gonna see another pullback before then continuing up so the whole reason behind this was if we have a little look we can see that price is stalling so what i mean by price is stalling is just when price kind of explodes with volume you know it's going to start slowing down it's starting to stall right so it's like a car if it runs out of fuel it's going to start stalling before then just crashing right so when we can see price stalling we know that price is you know starting to slow down we're going to need to find you know liquidity pools and all of this sort of stuff so the whole intention behind this position was to see price retrace take a little bit more liquidity i wasn't expecting or anticipating it to you know come this low um but even if it did turn around here you know we're, we're going to be getting out there because that's our first point of liquidity and that's the first point of interest which i'm about to walk you through so what we're currently looking at is we're on the one hour right there's a there's an unmitigated poy over here so it's, it's a bit of an aggressive approach i wouldn't be guessing where reversals are but in this case we understand that price is coming to a point where it's gonna start looking for a reversal down to the first point of liquidity so if we now look at current price action we can see that obviously price needs to take liquidity before continuing up so in this case it comes and takes the first point of liquidity then goes up and then again comes back down takes liquidity takes the liquidity to fuel it and then again creates a new high comes back down takes the liquidity and so on that's how price moves every retracement has to take some point of liquidity so if we're just chilling on the one hour we can see that this low here is our first point of liquidity right so with that being in mind, we can now have a look at what the lower time frame structure is saying. So we can see here that price was kind of accumulating. We then kind of manipulated the lows, taking liquidity, and then we came back up to the upside. And then obviously tapping into that POI, which we can class as some type of manipulation zone, because we're going to see the sales, you know, at some point down to the first point of interest. So... All we can literally do once price is tapped into the POI, then we jump down to the one minute. So, jumping down to the one minute, if I draw that accurately, we can see that as soon as it taps into it, 
price comes up, taps into it, retraces, comes back up, inducing the high, comes down, so it broke that low, creating a new low, and then it left liquidity here before obviously creating the new low. So our intention now with the entry for it to be a valid you know entry, we need to see a liquidity sweep before the entry. So this is our first point of liquidity. So that's that's part of our rules, right? So we've got that. We've got liquidity and then again here the first point of interest completely valid because it hasn't been mitigated you know nothing's tested it previously meaning it's then no longer invalid right so as you can see price taps into it doesn't really give any reaction we're leaving big wicks which is you know okay because we want to see wicks away from a POI because it's you know kind of confirming that price is looking to start selling right but obviously price comes up and as soon as we see it come up with volume and just take that high pushing further up into the order block and a key factor is that it doesn't break out of the POI it's still a completely valid setup so the first thing that we're waiting for before catching the entries we want to see a candle closed with volume in our direction so a candle closed here didn't have any volume the next candle opens comes up slightly and then comes down with volume and as soon as it closes that's when you can then enter and then back to the one hour we can see exactly where the POI was I believe we can find out where that is so we were just targeting a nice safe level which is an unmitigated order block just underneath the liquidity so it's a safe take profit if you wanted to hold all the way down then you could have do so so we could have even held down to this level because if price you know started shifting away from this level then yeah well, maybe we would have closed or looked for buyers but you know here obviously price just continued to sell through um so that other than there would look for nearly 41 percent um i had a lot of questions as well on um eu this morning uh where it melted as you can see all of these order blocks have been mitigated all of these order blocks are mitigated on the five minute or yeah, it was the on the five minute we did have a tiny order block that wasn't mitigated i believe we had an order block that wasn't mitigated maybe it's because we we're on fxcm yeah because we we're on fxcm if we have a look here we've got a nice order block here and then it started selling off of there but that's a position that wasn't in my rules, wasn't in my members' rules. So it's just a position that when someone's questioning me, it's like, you know, it's, I'm not going to give you the answer type thing because I wouldn't have taken it. I don't want you trying to figure out why every single move happens because, you know, not every single move lines up with our plan. So it's like, you don't need to figure it out. There are some trades where it will go in your direction without taking liquidity, you know moving off of a mitigated POI but essentially they're the trades that we don't want to be catching so you know you can't question those types of trades you've just got to stick to the plan if it wasn't in the plan doesn't matter if it hit take profit it doesn't matter how because if you figure out how you know there's no point trying to put it in your plan because you know the highest probability is it's probably not going to happen so yeah maybe 20% it does but at the end of the day you know 20% is nothing if it's 20% win rate on that approach then you're going to be losing eight trades to win two trades um so if i was you i'd be following the highest probability concepts um has anyone got any questions so far on that luke can you write all the rules required or we should meet to enter a trade um no that's the mentorship um you know i'll help you as much as providing value and providing education but in terms of handing it to you on a plate that is what the mentorship's there for you know uh, it took me f you know i've been trading nearly five years I'm not putting my hard sweat and tears just for free not because i'm selfish it's just because you get the people that are going to take the information not make the most of it you know end up not succeeding in trading because they just quit or give up and it's like why would i do that do you know what i mean that's why i don't charge loads everyone says i need to up my prices and stuff you know i don't want to charge loads because i don't want to make it unfair for the people that may not be able to, to uh, might not be able to afford it it's question time if you've got any questions unmute yourself or send a message in the free source um chat
just waiting for someone to finish messaging the comment. You went from one hour POI down to the five min and then one minute for entry, right? Yeah, so the message that I sent in at the start of the week or just before the beginning of the week, I wanna, wanted you boys and girls, whatever, to focus on the five minute, right? There's too many people trading just the one minute. You know, I was speaking to um, a client earlier who joined um, this evening. I was on a call with them. Um, He's been trading for a couple of years, but he's just been trading, you know, supply and demand on the four hours. So the lowest time frame he goes to is the 15 minute. So for him mastering the higher time frame, and then him now dropping down to the five minute and the one minute for refinement entries, he's going to be doing better than the majority of you people that aren't using the higher time frame. You know, if you're just using the one minute and you're not using any other time frame, your win rate's probably going to be like 10%. I will not go on the one minute until we're inside of a five minute POI or a 15 minute. Doesn't matter what time frame it is, just not the one minute. The one minute is pure. I wish if I could change anything about TradingView is they took the one minute off because it's what makes everyone's journey 10 times longer. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, non so, non so. You're you're unmuted, by the way. So if you want to just speak, you don't have to type. Your name's a bit crazy as well. Non so. If you do want to unmute yourself to ask questions, it's a lot easier. Um, I'm waiting for everyone yeah. to finish typing so I can answer the questions. He's saying we should trade 15 min and 5 min more instead of the 1 min. We should only use 1 min. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I mean. 1 min fucks you up mentally. Because you, you take 5 trades a day and lose all of them. You're questioning why you can't trade. It's literally got... If you, you know, you've been trading for a year or two and you understand the concepts and you know how to put it on a piece of paper... It's got nothing to do with your knowledge. It's literally your experience. Gain experience with higher time frames. You've never traded one min in my life before. It's literally just for refining your entries. It's not for refining your POIs. I mean, you can if you want sometimes. But if you're just getting started, do not go down to the one minute until price has pushed into your higher time frame POI. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Um, now you said we should go to the one minute for refinement. Well, but now you know price is in price has gone to so your Q, your QI for five minutes. Then you stay down to the one minute to look for entry. Then why your entry is supposed to come in? You find out uh, on the other block. You enter all those on the on that other block. Just knowing that price already in your five minutes POI of the me POI to take price blue as as you are looking for yourself. Well, I'm confused on your question. I couldn't hear the last bit. Okay, I said 
you said you can choose 15 minutes or five minutes one hour one minute is our refinement with 20 hour trade now let's assume go to the one minute now you reading price actually found that they are on predicted other block for price to go down do you look at those other block or you just as a as a way of entry or trade or you enter through the one minute or b so i'll use you know, five minute. Well, I'll use all the higher time. I'll use all the higher time frames. I'll look for all of them at least, anyway, and then I'll use whatever one is needed. So, if I'm using the five minute, if I'm using, you know, if I've got a fifteen minute order block and I don't want to refine it anymore, so I don't want to refine it on the five minute or the one minute, then again. As soon as price pushes into it, I'm on the one minute. But bearing in mind, because it's a 15 minute order block, it's going to be, you know, a bit bigger. So what I'll tell you is, you know, if it's obviously a one minute order block or a five minute, it might be that big, whatnot. If it's a 15 minute order block, it might be that big. So if we're coming into it on the one minute and just taps it and then it shifts, there is still a likelihood that price might accumulate, have no liquidity because everything's mitigated. And it may induce you because where it's got a lot of space still above above that first tap you know price may still still fill it so you know we, i won't be entering limits you know it's just entering off of reactions if if the entry kind of changes then you've just got to know how to adapt with the market you know sometimes it's good it's going to induce you out of the market and then understanding why it's done it and it's still stayed inside of the poy it's still completely valid to potentially be taking that re-entry um so regardless of what time frame the poy is on i'll still be going down to the one minute for the reaction i'll always use the one minute for my entries always but i'll never use the one minute for looking for opportunities the opportunities i would never go lower than the five minute maybe sometimes the three minute but very rarely There's some tool that calculates your risk when you enter. Say that again, sorry, do I what? Do you have some tool that uh, calculates your risk when you enter the trades? Because uh, sometimes um, it can happen very quickly and you might miss your entry. Well, I'm just wondering. I think because I'm on personal, I'm a bit more free with it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas when you're on funded, you kind of you, wa you want to calculate these. Mind, you don't mind. Uh, you don't mind risking like a different uh, percentage like you don't you don't know nah. so be exact. because where i'm on personal you know i've always been compounding so i'm always up in the lot slowly and slightly so for me it's just a bit easier because i understand that you know i may be the difference might be one time i might kind of get it wrong and i'm risking 0.9 or if i'm trying to risk 0.5 i might risk 0.4 or 0.6 sometimes it's but uh, that's just me, you know, sometimes uh, it's easy for me. Whereas if you were unfunded, I'd 100% be trying to calculate it because if you're unfunded, you want to be risking the exact amount so you know where you're kind of sitting at with your, you know, your your metrics and whatever. Um, but it, I would always suggest, yeah, definitely calculate. We don't have to calculate, to be fair. There's a lot of people that, like, they'll write it up. So what they'll do is they'll have, let's say they've got 10,000 funded, they'll work out what how much to risk for you know say they're, they're risking one percent a trade they'll write down how much one percent is on a one pip trade and then they'll write out the lots how much is one percent on a two pip write it down how much is one percent on a three pip and write it down so you've got it in front of you so you know if you look it's 3.2 pips then what you're going to do you're going to look at your chart or your you're going to look at your piece of paper and say, okay, three pips is six lots or 6.5 lots. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's easier doing that way, I think. Does that make sense? Yeah, that helps a lot. Thanks, mate. No worries, no worries. Right, has anyone got any more questions then? I might just wrap it up and keep it short. Yeah, I want I wanted to like ask you like how you um how you 
can you re-explain how you know the direction of the market you you made a video but i couldn't quite understand very well okay okay so what i'm doing i'll just show you what i'm doing and you can study it um so what i'll do is i'll come on the markets in the morning if like for instance this morning london session is inside inside of this candle what what am i going to be thinking right so what i'm thinking is all of these order blocks right they've mitigated each other blah blah blah, blah. so on the four hour the first point of liquidity is here on the one hour it's actually here so i'm going to leave it on the one hour because there's no point because i'm going to drop down to that in a minute and just show you why so if we're coming into the markets here, and I understand that this is a mitigated order block, you know, we're not going to be seeing price buy off of it. So we know that price is going to come down to the liquidity. So straight off the bat, I know that we're going to be looking for sales down to the first point of liquidity because price, even though, yeah, it may take, you know, little little buyers up taking liquidity and retracements and whatnot, but price isn't going to take that external buy until it's taken that liquidity, right? So understanding that, obviously here you can see it might have even been the 15 or the 30 minute but this this is our first point of liquidity so the first point of liquidity on the four hours here but if we look to the left we can actually see that this order block has already been mitigated so this is our first point of liquidity so like for instance this morning i would have a hundred percent taken a sell if we had seen price raid the liquidity from that so it's all about building a picture on the higher time frame so on the higher time frame we know that price is trying to sell because it shouldn't buy until it's taken that liquidity. So that's the whole point with finding a narrative, building a picture. Because once you start trading like facts in a way, it's going to make your injuries a lot easier. And it's going to make your patience a lot easier. Because you're going to be able to be super patient because you understand that price isn't going to be buying until it's taken it. So even if you're seeing here breaker structures, you're not going to be buying. Because at the end of the day, it hasn't taken the liquidity yet. So it's going to help you a lot. Um just understanding what what price is doing right does that does that make sense from which yeah. video would you recommend beginner to start watching your video i mean all of them i think are beginner friendly but if you're proper proper brand new there is like a 10 or 11 short boot camp if you go over to the youtube and scroll down to maybe six months ago i'm not sure there is a little boot camp with 10 or 11 videos um, that are kind of more basic. Um, you recorded this year, man. Yes, brother. When drawing an OB, do you just draw the last candle or two or more? So the only reason why I'll do two is, for instance, if we go over, I don't know where the example was. So actually, here's an example. So an order block on its, on its own, that's fine. Look, one candle, I'll use that. In this case, when we have an order block here, right, we've got an order block here, and then we've got a small IFC candle in between, what I'll do is I'll just mark out both of them, just in case it does come up a bit higher into the IFC. Sorry, can you explain that again? Um, so, you can have an order block on its own. So here, for instance, the last candle before the down move was just one candle. So that is an order block. For instance, here, just before the first move down, we've got an order block here, a big candle, that's the order block. That there is the order block, right? The small candle is an IFC candle, which is basically the same thing as an order block. However, 
I don't trade off of IFC candles, I'll just highlight both of them. Because sometimes if you just highlight the IFC, price can just sometimes tap the order block and then sell. And there's no point in me missing a position just because I'm trying to over refine. So in this case, that's two candles and I'll highlight both of them. How do you differ internal structure and external? Are there some rules to market, or is it just pure experience? Um, no, it's not. It's, it's just a rule. It's um, I'll, I'll say it's quite common sense, but I will obviously show you because you, you may not know. External is just the trend. Internal is the retracement. So the internal internal is just the retracement, right? The external is. Is the trend so say for instance that's the first point that's the first external low that we have that's our first point of liquidity so so that being our first point of liquidity even if price comes down and breaks it that's not a break of structure because that's the first point of liquidity sweep first point of liquidity so that there is just a liquidity raid right you know that's that's not price creating a new low and then we're going to start seeing sales that's how that's why you've got to understand liquidity first point of liquidity it's going to break it because it's taking the liquidity it's not broken structure then what we're going to see we're going to see price tap into the poi and then there's your entry <coughs> is there any more questions before i stop this recording and get it posted on the youtube Um, all right, I'm going to stop recording now, boys. I'll do 